Within the rich tapestry of biblical characters, none quite captures the mystery and allure as Melchizedek does. This enigmatic figure, tucked away within the pages of Genesis and resurfacing in the New Testament book of Hebrews, offers a fascinating study in biblical interpretation and theological reflection. The Bible is filled with notable individuals. Moses, the great deliverer. David, the man after God's own heart. Abraham, the father of many nations. Yet none of them hold the same profound mystique as Melchizedek. His brief but significant appearance hints at an underlying grandeur, shrouding him in a veil of intrigue that persists to this day. As we traverse the sacred narratives of Scripture, we encounter a host of captivating characters. From the steadfast Abraham to the devout Apostle Paul, each of these figures holds a unique place in the biblical story. However, arguably, one of the most mysterious and exciting characters in all of Scripture is Melchizedek. This elusive figure, who was both king and priest, appears almost unexpectedly and vanishes just as quickly, leaving us with more questions than answers. Unlike other biblical characters whose lives and deeds are recounted in elaborate detail, Melchizedek's story is brief, and this brevity only enhances the enigma surrounding him. Yet within this succinct narrative, Melchizedek's importance in the overarching story of faith is undeniable, sparking curiosity and piquing interest in theologians and believers alike. Who was Melchizedek, and why should we, as followers of Christ, care about him? These are the questions we will ponder over today. Melchizedek, a figure whose name means, quote, King of Righteousness, first appears in the book of Genesis, chapter 14. The narrative tells us he was also the King of Salem, or King of Peace. This king was not just a ruler, he was also a priest of God Most High. There's a fascinating encounter between him and Abraham. After a wearying battle, Abraham meets Melchizedek, who blesses him. Abraham, in turn, gives Melchizedek a tithe, or a tenth of all he has. Why is this important to us? This interaction sets a precedent, or example, of recognizing God's authority through the priesthood, long before the Levitical priesthood was established. It is also significant because it's rare. Melchizedek is one of the few characters in the Bible who served as both a king and a priest, roles that were usually separated. But the story of Melchizedek doesn't end in Genesis. The writers of Hebrews picks up his story and compares Melchizedek to Jesus Christ. This is where we start to understand the typology significance of Melchizedek. A type is a model, a forerunner, or an example that prefigures something that comes later. Melchizedek, in his role as a king and a priest, serves as a type of Christ. Like Melchizedek, Jesus holds the dual role of a king, the king of kings, and a high priest. This parallel is more profound given that both Melchizedek and Christ appear as figures of peace and righteousness. Now, we get to the big question. Is Melchizedek and Jesus the same person? The answer isn't straightforward, and the truth is, no one can 100% say yes or no, because there is no direct biblical statement that explicitly identifies Melchizedek as Jesus Christ. Some might argue that he was a unique individual, a human king-priest who demonstrated what the Messiah would be like. On the other hand, some Christians believe Melchizedek was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ, a theory known as a Christophany. A Christophany is a specific type of theophany, where the pre-incarnate Christ, Jesus, before his incarnation as a human being, is believed to have appeared. While the term is not directly used in the Bible, it is often used by theologians to describe Old Testament manifestations of God that are identified with Jesus. This idea is derived from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3, which describes Melchizedek as being, quote, without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God. He remains a priest forever. 
This description hints at something supernatural about Melchizedek, something that goes beyond a typical human lifespan or lineage. Hence, the belief that he could be an early appearance of Jesus himself, a Christophany? This is a profound thought. Imagine Abraham, after his exhausting battle, meeting and paying tribute not just to any king priest, but to the Lord Jesus himself. In the end, the identity of Melchizedek may remain a mystery. Whether he was an exceptional human being or a divine figure, his importance in our faith remains. He shows us a clear image of what Christ is like and the roles he fulfills. Melchizedek serves as a timeless reminder of Christ's eternal priesthood, his kingship, and the peace and righteousness he brings. Remember, beloved ones, in understanding the mystery of Melchizedek, we delve deeper into our understanding of Jesus Christ, our King and High Priest. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 through 16. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Understanding Jesus as our high priest is critical because it highlights his unique role in mediating between humanity and God. I want to highlight two points. Point number one, Jesus Christ is our mediator. The concept of a mediator is central to the understanding of the Old Testament priesthood, and it continues into the New Testament with even greater depth in the person of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the high priest stood as a mediator, a go-between, bridging the gap between a holy God and his sinful people. This was a society wherein the people could not approach God directly due to their sin. The high priest, after going through cleansings and wearing sacred garments, offered animal sacrifices on behalf of the Israelites. These sacrifices were a means to atone for their sins, a temporary covering rather than a complete erasure of sin. The priest acted as an intercessor, praying for the people and asking for God's mercy on their behalf. However, the priest himself was a fallible human being who also needed to make sacrifices for his own sins. This system was a constant reminder of the barrier that sin had created between God and humanity, and the recurring sacrifices pointed to the need for a perfect and permanent solution. In the New Testament, we see this solution realized in Jesus Christ. As our high priest, Jesus mediates between humanity and God in a way that surpasses the Old Testament priesthood. The Apostle Paul puts it succinctly in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, when he says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus, fully God and fully human, bridges the gap perfectly. As God, he is holy and sinless, and as a man, he understands our struggles and temptations. In his role as mediator, Jesus does not present the blood of animals to atone for our sins. Instead, he offered himself as the perfect sacrifice, once and for all. His sacrifice on the cross provides the means for humanity to be reconciled with God. Unlike the high priest who needed to make continual sacrifices, Jesus' single sacrifice was enough. Through his death and resurrection, he opened the way for us to approach God directly. Right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, you can approach God. Point number two, the empathy of the high priest, Jesus Christ. The concept of empathy as it relates to Jesus in his role as our high priest is an extraordinary part of our Christian understanding. Empathy refers to the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. When we say Jesus is empathetic, we mean he has a deep understanding of our human experiences, including our pains, our joys, our struggles, and our temptations. Therefore, in the face of life's trials and tribulations, no one can cast a glance towards the heavens and declare, God, you do not understand what I am experiencing. For indeed, through Jesus Christ, he does. No one can accuse God of being distant or detached, claiming, 
you do not comprehend the human condition. For in truth, through his incarnation as Jesus, our high priest, God has intimately experienced our mortal journey. As Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 assures us, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. The fellowship we can share with Jesus Christ is profoundly personal and intimate, precisely because he has traversed the same earthly path we tread. He has felt our joys and sorrows, weathered our challenges, and breathed the very same air we breathe today. This divine empathy forms the cornerstone of our faith, a wellspring of comfort and a beacon of hope. Jesus, while being fully divine, also took on human flesh, and in doing so, experienced life as we do. He was born into a humble setting, grew up learning a trade, and faced the various daily challenges that people encounter. He knew what it was like to be hungry, tired, and rejected. He understood joy, friendship, and sorrow. Even more intensely, he faced the pain of betrayal, false accusations, and agonizing death. Jesus was tempted in every way that we are. However, unlike us, he never sinned. He perfectly obeyed God's will, even in the face of the most extreme temptation. And because of this experience, he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. He understands our frailties and failings, not from a distance or as an abstract concept, but from lived experience. This empathetic high priesthood of Jesus is incredibly comforting. It means that when we approach God in prayer, we're not speaking to a distant, detached deity, but to someone who knows firsthand what we're going through. This brings new meaning to verses such as Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. This passage assures us of God's steadfast presence and protection in times of trials and tribulations. It offers comfort and encouragement, reminding us that we are not alone in our struggles. With our understanding of Jesus' humanity and his experiences on earth, this promise becomes even more potent. When we pass through the metaphorical waters and fires of life, through periods of loss, heartache, uncertainty, or pain, we can know that Jesus, our high priest, is not merely a distant observer. He is one who deeply understands our human suffering because he himself has walked through the fire and emerged unscathed. He experienced hunger, tiredness, rejection, joy, friendship, sorrow, betrayal, and death. He breathed our air and felt our pain. His empathetic presence tells us, I am with you, I understand. It's not an empty assurance from a far removed deity, but a comforting pledge from someone who knows the human condition intimately. This gives us the courage and strength to face our trials, knowing that we have a savior who understands our troubles and intercedes on our behalf. Moreover, this empathy underscores the depth of Jesus's love for us. He was willing to endure the trials of human life and the pain of the cross to create a way for us to have a relationship with God. Because he has experienced our struggles and temptations, he is perfectly equipped to provide us with the help and grace we need. As the next verse, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 encourages us, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Knowing Jesus as our empathetic high priest instills in us a profound sense of comfort and confidence as we navigate our earthly journeys. Just as Melchizedek interceded for Abraham, Jesus, our high priest, mediates for us. He became the perfect and final sacrifice for our sins, offering not animals, but himself. His priesthood is eternal, signifying that his sacrifice was once and for all, and his intercession for us is continual. Also, like Melchizedek, who was the king of Solom, Jesus is the king of kings, bringing us peace that surpasses understanding. His kingship doesn't rest on human appointment, 
but on the truth of his identity as the Son of God. Therefore, the understanding of Melchizedek's unique kingship and priesthood gives us a clearer image of who Jesus is, the roles he fulfills, and the eternal nature of his work, affirming his place as our high priest and king. This connection draws us into a deeper understanding of Jesus' unique role and encourages a more profound personal relationship with him.